<clears throat> Revin up your engine. Listen to a howling roar. Metal under tension, begging you to touch and go. Highway to the danger zone. It's been 36 years since Top Gun. Pete Maverick Mitchell is still only a captain in the Navy, now pushing the boundaries as a test pilot, dodging a promotion that would take him out of the cockpit for good. Maverick is tasked with training a new group of Top Gun pilots for an impossible mission and gives him time to reconnect with Rooster, the son of his former partner and best friend, Goose. I was 10 years old when I got introduced to the first movie. I remember renting it on VHS. It was one of the biggest movies of 1986. So is this new film any good? Well, is the atomic weight of Cobalt 58.9? That means yes. The movie opens almost exactly like the original. You get the title card, the score, and then of course Kenny Loggins' Danger Zone while we're treated to footage of fighter jets. I know, that's a large dose of member berries, but at this point I was already sold. One of the more fascinating things about Tom Cruise is that he always wants to do everything himself. He's basically a stuntman at this point. A, a highly paid stuntman. But when he wanted to pilot an F-18, the Navy said, um, how about no? However, they did get to be in the F-18s. Director Joseph Kaczynski and the crew used brand new developed IMAX cameras inside the cockpits to bring as much realism as possible to the film. So every actor you see in those shots is actually in the back of those F-18s. And it looks incredible. Just like the first movie, they had a lot of help from the Navy. And this time around, all the actors went through a special training program. You see, in the first Top Gun, you only see real footage of Tom Cruise in an F-14 because he was the only one who went through training to handle the G-forces. All the other actors in that movie were replaced by real Navy pilots. But not this time. All the actors you see in this movie are actually in the back of those F-18 cockpits, acting and speaking their lines of dialogue. It's pretty impressive. The best parts of the movie come from the training sessions and of course the actual mission itself. Which reminded me a lot of the Star Wars trench run. That entire climax of the film is gripping to say the least. The movie does a great job building up to that point and it has a couple of really big surprises that I did not expect. It has some incredible looking dogfights and action sequences. Uh, trust me, you really need to see this on a big screen or at least some place with a good sound system because the sound design in this film is amazing. I always love it when the score of the film is left out of a scene when the stakes are really high. It just adds to the realism. I'm just gonna tell you right now, I recommend Top Gun Maverick. It's great and you should go see it. But some of the drama in this movie is a little corny. I understood the need for the tension between Maverick and Miles Teller. It's a storyline key to who Maverick has become and why he's doing what he's doing. You see, to him, bringing the pilots back alive is more important than the mission. He feels responsible, especially when it comes to the son of his best friend. And the fact that it's such a dangerous mission really amps up the tension of the film. The dynamic within the team also brings some drama to the movie. Uh, at first, everyone on the team thinks Maverick is a has-been, and their relationship develops over over time as well. But Jennifer Connelly is in this movie solely for the purpose of having a romance with Maverick. Now, I really like Jennifer Connelly, but that felt a little textbook, a little cliche. So you could say they lost that loving feeling. But it was really nice to see Val Kilmer back on the big screen again, even for a minute or two. Besides the first five minutes of the film, this movie also has a fair amount of callbacks to the original. We have Miles Teller playing Great Balls of Fire on the piano, and of course, you gotta have Tom Cruise riding a motorcycle next to a runway. And no volleyball this time, but the team does play dogfight football on the beach. But the biggest callback had wings. It was Really rad, and that's all I will say about that. Top Gun Maverick did a lot of things right. It's a little corny every now and then, but it's exciting from start to finish. I always get extra excited when movies are shot practically, especially when they develop new cameras for it. You just know you're gonna see some things you haven't seen before. This is for all intents and purposes a Top Gun movie, and if you're from Generation X, like me, this movie will not disappoint you. Ahem. 
<clears throat> you never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips, and there's no tenderness like before in your fingertips. You're trying hard not to show it, but baby, baby, I know it. You.